There seems to be some similarities in the way that the Russians and the Chinese use disinformation campaigns and propaganda to try and force their adversaries' hands. You know, certainly. You know, China is a master of this. And, of course, uh, the Russians and the Chinese are capable of out-and-out out lying. I think the story here, John, is that you got the mainstream media, which was really in the tank for the Biden administration from day one, is now using especially disrespectful language in these questions. And I think it shows that the Biden administration really has, over the course of months, used, um, used the press in ways that the press is really upset at. And I actually think that the, um, the President Biden's unprintable comments about Peter Ducey in that exchange about a week and a half ago really was a turning point because the press is the press and they just don't like um, an attack on a reporter like that. Yeah, and you expect there to be a little bit more comedy between uh, the press corps and the U.S. officials. China has to love this, considering they don't have a free press and they can spread this propaganda around. Another thing that we want to talk about as we examine the Chinese-Russian alliance here is one of the reasons why Xi needs Putin uh, is jet engines, right? These Chinese jet engines inside their stealth J-20 fighters are failing. China is being forced to use Russian jet engines, and this was discovered when they tried to put new laser weapons on these aircraft. What other issues are we seeing inside the Chinese military when it comes to hardware? Well, this jet engine thing is really perplexing to me because over the course of decades, China has not been able to steal and to develop its, tech, um, its engines. It's worked very, very hard on reverse engineering Russian engines, and it hasn't been able to do it. And I think that really points to a failure in China's um, tech drive in general. And we've seen this in a number of areas. They've got a lot of shiny new weapons, and it's not just the J-20. Um, but the question is whether these will actually work under war fighting capabilities, uh, conditions. And there are a number of questions about this, especially when it comes to some of their newer ships. Yeah, well, you know, that is interesting story, and we'll see what comes of that. These uh, jets continue to fail. Um, and as you mentioned, obviously there's tension between Russia and China. They want the technology. Does Russia want to give it to them? We shall see. I also want to talk to you about uh, Taiwan. And, uh, you know, we promised to give the Biden administration credit where credit is due. And this might be one of those times I wanted to get, get your assessment on this story before I do so. They've approved a $100 million support contract with Taiwan aimed at boosting the island's missile defense systems. This will help Taiwan get new Patriot missiles. Is this a needed step? Is it not enough, Gordon? What do you think? Well, certainly it's a needed step, John. I think that we should be doing more because Taiwan is under unprecedented threat. Got to remember that just a few days ago, um, China um, flew a jet through Taiwan's sovereign airspace. You know, all these incursions we've been talking about over the last months have been into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, which is not sovereign airspace. It's a hostile act when you don't mention it and you don't ask for permission, but it is nonetheless permissible under international rules. But what China did um, recently over Matsu, which is one of the outlying islands, was to fly through Taiwan's airspace. Mm. And, and this shows uh, boldness on the part of Beijing. And it means that I, I think the Biden administration has done a lot that's good with regard to Taiwan, but it's not enough because mm. China is now pushing forward very fast. Yeah, obviously you would think that Patriot missiles might keep Chinese aircraft out of Taiwanese airspace. Again, we shall see on that. All right, lastly, Gordon wanted to wrap up on the Olympics. NBC's primetime host, Mike Tirico, who's a great guy, one of the best in the business, he's going to have a shorter stay in Beijing than originally planned. The network says he's coming back to cover the Super Bowl, but others have wondered if it's because Tirico mentioned China's genocide against Uyghur Muslims in the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. He did talk about it. Again, to NBC's credit, they mentioned it. And now there's a strange report about Mike Tirico coming home early. What's your read on this? This really is fascinating because there's nothing that Tariko would say about genocide or any other sensitive topic without clearing it first with NBC brass. But, you know, the big story here is that if you're an NBC reporter or anchor, the first thing you want to do is get out of China. This has right. been a disaster. I mean, you look at the ratings, you look at all the rest of it. If you're Mike Tirico and you have a chance to go to Los Angeles for the Super Bowl, of course you're going to go as soon as possible. Yeah. There's no question about it. Mike Tirico, probably a family guy, wanted to get out of China. And I didn't even have the picture ready, Gordon, but I'm sure people can look it up because I didn't believe it was a real picture. But is it a real picture, the Chinese ski 
area that's in like a nuclear power plant. Is that real? I saw that on TV. I don't know. The optics anyway, not great. Doesn't really look like the Winter Olympics no. in Beijing. It looks like a communist country. Gordon Chang, great to see you. Thanks very much, John.